Welcome back to RestoreLiberty.us. We're sitting here talking with Prosecutor Melissa Powers. Uh, the first segment was extremely, extremely informative. I, I've got a new appreciation for your experience and what that means. The issue we have now is Hamilton County has changed in the last 10 years. We talked a little bit about that. We're currently facing a situation where you're up against people who are simply because they had a D behind their name, they're now judges. They've never been in a courtroom, have very little experience on either side of the attorney's you know, bench. What is it we're facing now? What has happened in the last few years in Cincinnati and Hamilton County? Well, um, as far as the demographics of Hamilton County, it has become many more Democrats than there are Republicans. Um, and the Democrats have been more successful uh, on their campaigning, particularly in the area of the of the judicial bench. So judges are getting in um, because they have a D behind their name, um, but no experience behind them or, or very little experience. Um, I, in 2020, there were nine judges. There was only one judge that got elected. Um, that uh, had experience, and that was only one. only one that had criminal experience, to my knowledge. I might be wrong on that, but the one, maybe two, but for the most part, uh, they didn't. They've never tried a, a criminal case. They never even tried a case. Um, they've never in a civil arena. Um, so it was. It really brings challenges to the prosecutor's office, making sure that we get justice, accountability, appropriate um, uh, sentences to the severity of the crime, um, and it really is very, very challenging. Uh, many of them adopted that progressive agenda of soft on crime, um, let's fix the system, let's um, reform the justice system, and really any kind of reform should occur in the state legislature. Um, and so there are three branches of government, and sometimes that gets um, confused um, in the courtroom. So the prosecutor's office has to continue. They're basically our warriors fighting very, very hard to make sure that um, cases are being decided in the proper way. And we're not, we don't always get there. So we always, as conservatives, like to talk about the rule of law. When you're up against a progressive judge and a Soros prosecutor, the rule of law is like not even a second thought anymore. It's simply, I look at this person, this person's a person of color, or this is some other minority, therefore he's been oppressed and we should let them go. Do, are we seeing that now in Hamilton County as well? I think I think what we're seeing is that they're not following the law. They're not following the evidence rules. They're not maintaining um, the decorum and the proper respect in the courtroom. Often, um, I've heard all I've heard all kinds of stories um, that are coming out of the courtroom. But um, yeah, if you're not following the law, um, if you're making up the law, we're seeing in our court of appeals, they're just creating law. They're very activist type judges, um, and it's setting bad precedents. We have at our First District Court of Appeals, um, we have, um, our office has fought to get into the Supreme Court, so we've appealed the Court of Appeals decision, uh, and they sometimes may be reversing maybe what a jury has done. Twelve jurors have made a finding, and there's a reversal um, of a case or something extreme um, where the law is not being followed, we get in front of the Supreme Court. In the state of Ohio, our district, um, Hamilton County, has the most uh, cases, criminal cases before the first district or in front of the Ohio Supreme Court that's ever been in history. Wow. So right now we have cur currently 12 cases. It's unheard of. Um, usually you might have one, um, but we have 12 cases that are pending now before the um, Ohio Supreme Court. Which is another cry for why we have to be very concerned about the Ohio Supreme Court elections this exactly. term. There are three, three offices up, and if we don't retain those, we lose this ability to overturn, you know, liberal appeals court judges um so down the line it seems like we're having trouble now because we've been infiltrated by people that don't understand the law have never enforced the law and feel that their job is to create new law i know that on your facebook page you talk about some of the most egregious cases there and we'll we'll send uh that facebook page on on the website so you can check this out yourself but you use that as a way to get in front of the public of, of some of the more atrocious decisions that are happening. Is it 
getting worse or are we kind of standing still right now i mean where is the state of hamilton county from you know the judicial rule of law perspective well there are some strong concerns and when there is um where we think the public is not being protected they have a right to know we'll put that case up on the um, um on our facebook page our social media um and so we encourage you to do that it's really the only way you're getting that information when i was a judge for 16 years um we, I always knew my decisions. I was held accountable to the people, um, to the voter, and what. Uh, and and there were used back then. There used to be reporters in the courtroom. We don't have that anymore. Um, I believe our current um, newspaper is very very liberal, um, and you'll see um, our office, my office, or myself being attacked. Um, anytime we speak out on public safety. So they don't like that I'm putting this stuff on Facebook uh, and they want to work against that. They're not promoting, they're not protecting, they're wanting to protect, I believe, a certain um, political party versus another. Um, and they do want this office. They want the power of this office to be out there. So what I'm saying to everybody, that your safety you are affected by the decisions that are being made in the courtroom. Um, and you are affected by the actions of the prosecutor's office as to whether or not you'll be safe, your family will be safe. Can you walk down the street? Can you go to a grocery store and not be fear that you could be harmed or go to a, a, a sport event like FC or the Reds game? Are you gonna be okay and safe coming down here? You want the police officers to be doing their job. You want the, the prosecutor's office doing their job and you wanna make sure that the judges are doing their job to keep us safe. And so too often we see their po the political agenda is much more important than our individual safety or the community safety or even the victim's rights. Um, uh, we, uh, they're not, that's, that's not important. Wow, that's that's it, not encouraging to hear, but, but it's you can not make a surprising difference. at this point. But everyone can make a difference, and you can make a difference by voting, and you can make a difference by telling people, and you can make a difference going to our Facebook and sharing, or going to my um, uh, social media uh, uh, for Prosecutor for Powers, or Prosecutor Melissa Powers, excuse me, um, uh, go there and share. There's many videos I have up. There's cases that report on the uh, work uh, website and, and Facebook page. Um, so we want to make sure we're getting that information out so the voters are informed. And you may agree with what we put out. We put out the facts. We don't put out opinion. Um, on the office Facebook page, it's the facts. So you can decide, do you think this person should have gotten an OR bond? Somebody that um, broke into their their fiance's house and strangled them and, and they get an OR wow. bond. Um, do you think that's that's inappropriate? Is that person safe? And, you know, maybe you disagree or, or don't agree. I don't know. Well, with facts should be facts. Uh, that's, um, again, my engineering background. The, the laws of physics never changed. To me, the laws of, you know, aggravated assault and murder and all those things aren't open to interpretation. And the fact that it is now based on political lines, not rule of law lines, seems like an atrocious deserting of what America was and needs to become again. Um, this election is incredibly in, in, important. And let's, uh, let's move a little bit more into that. Uh, your opponent is, I, I won't say carpetbagger, but sh she's tried to go after basically any position she can get by election. But the, the downside of it is she's never been a prosecutor. She's never prosecuted a single case. She's never been a judge. Uh, didn't even have her law license last year. We are we are in a battle with someone who is unqualified for the job. How do we get the word out? What is it that that your campaign is doing to try and attack this from a logical rule of law safety perspective? Well, um, we're working very hard to make sure the public is informed. We've been going door to door since May, um, getting information out to the public, and particularly in the swing areas. So again, it shouldn't be about politics, it should be about your safety. Um, we have um, uh, a number of, we would love for you to share our post, um, particularly these videos. It defines me. It also will eventually, um, towards closer to the election, start defining my opponent. 
Um, but right now you can get to know more about me through these videos and through, and these are all testimonials. I have 31 years of experience and I have made many, many relationships throughout the course of my, um, uh, my career. And so you can get to know me, but also share those to your family and friends. So people know you get to know who you're voting for. My opponent is very, very silent, if you haven't noticed. Um, and I think she's running a campaign like Joe Biden did in the basement, um, right. you know, or, or Kamala Harris is doing because of um, that they don't want to put out uh, any information and speak because you would realize they don't have the experience, right, so they're going right. to hide all of that. Um, but she only um, practiced law very uh, um, uh, not more as a boutique type lawyer, maybe, or a hobby lawyer, uh, nothing consistent day in and day out from what I can tell, uh, going back through her career. Um, she only did that for 13 years and then became a state rep, uh, for two terms. But, um, um, the last time she was in a courthouse in a, on a criminal case was 2005, 2005, um, 2005. So almost 20 years ago, 20 years ago. And at that year, she only had 16 criminal cases, uh, that I could find on the, um, clerk's website. So that was over almost 20 years ago, but more things that you can do, you can go to our campaign, um, uh, website and and volunteer get signs uh, anything for that can help promote the office or help promote uh, the campaign you can donate obviously campaigns are expensive um, right. we have that you can do online uh, it's really hard to ask people for money I don't like doing it but it's part of the business um, so there's things like that um, and ma mainly volunteer we're doing a lot of grassroots especially the door-to-door -door. so Okay, good. Well, we will do what we can to get the word out. Um, really appreciate the chance to talk to you. Like I said, I, I'm walking away from this with a much better understanding of qualifications and proactive work that you've done. Absolutely amazing stuff. It would be an enormous loss for the county to not have that experience and that proactive uh, approach to solving some problems that nobody seemed to be wanting to pay attention to. So I really appreciate that. I, I hope we can get the word out and, and best of luck in November. Thank you, George. It was really great talking to you. And um, I really enjoyed uh, our conversation very much. Appreciate it. Again, any information we can get on Melissa will be up on the website. If you go to restoreliberty.us slash election, you'll get all of our information as well as slate cards, uh, links to her website. We appreciate you listening, and thanks 